Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, when was the last time you read a comic book? It's been quite a while for me, but there's a new comic book out called Aztec of the City. And we're going to find out more about it in a few minutes. I'd like to introduce you to Adriana Garcia. Welcome. Thank you. And this, I've known you for some time now, and you're a very accomplished graduate of San Jose State University. I know you're a writer, I know you sing, I know you drum, I know you're a poet as well, and hopefully we can get you to do some poetry yes. before the show's yes. over. But uh, you. you're the publicist for Aztec of the City. What's it all about? Well, um, we are releasing volume three, num issue number uh, one um, of Aztec of the City, and it's a story about Tony Avalos, who's a freshman student at San Jose State University. Um, and he has grandma who's teaching him about uh, his history um, and their people, the Mexica, right? Um, and this follows volume one and volume two, where Tony Avalos had a coma. He's going through um, this rebirth, right, uh, from this coma that he has. And in this new story, which is called a drive-by, um, he comes out of the coma and he realizes who he is and in the meantime, um, understanding his historical and cultural identity, his indigenous identity, um, uses that as his powers. And he speaks Nahuatl and tries to save the community, you know, uh, from random violence in, you know, in, in San Jose. So this whole different. story is based in San Jose. It's based in San Jose, um, and, but with the context of this indigenous identity uh -huh. that his grandmother tries to... Um, make sure he understands and knows. And so as he develops into the superhero that, that we'll get to know in the next five mm -hmm. more issues, um, that he becomes um, uh, alive, right? As Aztec of the city in uh -huh. the spirit of Guatemoc. Uh -huh. um, during, the, during the previous stories, uh, volumes, uh, the story is that his grandfather comes in during um, the time he has this coma and uh, and he brings in uh, the spirit and tries to cure him with the blood of Cuauhtémoc. And so that brings in, I guess you can say, the pretext to what Volume 3 will offer in, mm -hmm. in the coming stories thereafter. So now he, in this book, he's actually a student at San Jose State? He's a student at San Jose oh, State. How about that? And then during his, um, at least for this volume, right, it, his grandmother is the one that's teaching him, like, look, we come from this type of people, and this is how we go about living our lives and this is how we serve and um, in that same way then he ends up saving the community you know and hopefully so what we'll get to hear in the next five you know more uh -huh. value, um, the five more issues so actually there's um, different situations where he comes in does he wear a cape I mean what kind of superhero is he what he does, does he do? wear a cape oh he does um, okay he does. <laughs> and, um, and like I mentioned he speaks now while he does not fly um, the comic writer was given um, Fernando uh, Valderas Rodriguez, uh, who's actually a San Jose High School alumni, ah. uh, the Bulldogs. Um, <laughs> he uh, writes and, and has shared that what has happened is that he did have a superhero that flew and spoke English and did this supernatural things, right? Mm -hmm. But he was given feedback by the community saying, wait, our Aztecs don't fly, and <laughs> all these other dynamics, uh -huh. right? So um, he made it into now this newer version where he does actually speak now while oh, that's in a great. Spanish, and he does wear the cape um, as part of, you know, his props, right? But he does not fly, in, um, but he uses um, more of his... Um, spiritual powers, yes, kind spiritual of. spiritual powers mm -hmm. to be able to then, you know, foresee or save someone, or um, be able to relate it to what's going on in a social context. 
Well. So are these situations, since it's based in San Jose, is it, are they situations of things that have have occurred or are occurring in San both, Jose? Both. And, again, this is the first issue, so the uh -huh. other five issues will get to tell us a little bit more, and we'll see what comic writer Fernando is able to bring us. So it's a regular comic book, but you have to keep following it with we the next issue yes. and it keeps you hanging at the yes. end. Yes, it does. It's very suspenseful, actually. This, this <laughs> one issue is very suspenseful. Um, and of course, uh, it, it took five years to write, um, a, a long time for a comic book. He partnered up with Ernie Polo, who is an illustrator out of Mountain View, California, and um, the, the comic writer who lives in Mexico. They've been in connection for the last oh, wow. five years to, to match the story with the illustrations. Um, and then before he started this one, he ended up doing also um, two stories in one based on mujeres and women. And one's called Las Adelitas, o La Adelita, I should say. The other is called La Llorona, of course, a Mexican, <laughs> a legend in, Me in Mexico um, about the woman who cries for her children, mm -hmm. right? And La Adelita is the role model um, that many of us celebrate as Chicanas and Mexicanas um, for the woman who participated in the Mexican Revolution, mm -hmm. of course. So uh, this is a brand new, uh, exciting, uh, launch of, of volume three, issue it, number one. It's really a piece of art. If you look at um, the cover itself, the back cover, the um, the illustrations on the inside, it's amazing. And uh, where can our viewers find this? We have already re uh, been in, um, distributing them in a few local comic book stores, mm -hmm. uh, from Mountain View to Willow Glen, um, to Dance of San Jose, as well as Sunnyvale. Um, I'm not sure what, what other cities, but those for sure. Uh, call your local comic book store. They should have it. If they don't have it, then that's a good excuse to call and say, hey, get it on your shelves, please. Uh -huh. um, and they can, connect with, they can connect with us to eventually get it from us and make sure that they distribute in your local community. Oh, wonderful. So a local it'll, bookstore, I should say. And it'll be at uh, local native uh, events, powwows yes. and so forth? Um, yes, that's the other way of uh, our distribution, right? It's very grassroots um, mm -hmm. because he is, um, or we should say the, the publishing of it has been very independent. Uh, we will be at local events coming up. Uh, so check your weekend calendars. Make sure that uh, you also check out the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We'll be listing there um, all the activities where we'll be at, whether as a vendor or booth and or any other media outlets um, or community events that we may be supporting as a means of purchasing the comic book. And um, we are also very happy um, to have uh, connected with the San Jose Library. Uh, they are buying comic books oh, to good. put on their shelves. So in case you cannot buy it, you definitely can check it out. Um, we ask folks to check in a couple of weeks before mm -hmm. that's solidified. Wow, that's great. And we'll also post it on Facebook on Native Voice TV. You know, come on there, like our page. And we also put a lot of events that are going on in the community. And that way you can check out some of these events and go buy the book there. But we'll put it, uh, direct information and linkage to the, uh, the publisher and the uh, comic book itself. Absolutely. Tell me about the artist or the publisher of the magazine. Who is he? And so the publisher is the same person as the comic writer, but uh -huh. the publishing is called El Salto Comics. Uh, the comic writer is uh, was actually born in El Salto, uh, Morelia, Michoacán, uh, in Mexico. His family migrated to San Jose and grew up in Ryland Park, um, here in downtown San Jose, really close. And then um, eventually grew up in the Washington neighborhood. Um, he he ended up uh, being a young young kid um, who worked at a store called the Collector's Corner, um, First Street in Santa Clara here, and he got exposed to the comic book world uh, in that way. But he says he also remembers that when he was a child, uh, his mom used to take him and uh, his siblings to uh, St. Joseph's Cathedral, and they make their way to eat at Pedro's restaurant. Uh -huh. And then he see the uh, Jesus Elguera images, right? The ones we traditionally see in the um, the Aztec images in Mexican calendars. Mm -hmm. uh, he got inspired by those images. So then working eventually at Collector's Corner. Um, and then another story he adds is that when he went to Brian's Books, um, which is a comic store, 
uh, he was asking himself, why isn't there Mexican-based comic books or characters that are that are Mexican or Latino, right, and that uh, really embrace the Latino culture? Um, and he himself was buying Daredevil, uh, which is a really uh, well-known comic book, really older uh, comic book. Um, which he loves. Uh, it's one of the comic books that he still reads to this day. But in shopping for that, and you know, through those experiences, through his work and the images of, of the Jesus El Guerra images, he was like, "Well, I guess it's a good opportunity to start writing one." Mm -hmm. So, Volume One actually came out in about 1993, 1994. He himself wrote it, and then he drew it. Uh, so it was not the the best presentation for a first comic book of Asuka the City. But it definitely has an intention. You know, people really embraced it. He mm -hmm. came out with it in Cinco de Mayo um, and uh, did a whole press conference and everything, got a lot of support, and then he did eventually volume two with another illustrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was that one had a, a really professional presentation and therefore went national, and it sold out. Oh, so my So you goodness. can no longer find... Volume one, and you can no longer find. So, volume if you two. have those, you better hang on to them, yes, right? <laughs> Collector's yes, items. Absolutely, absolutely. So, in in like I sh shared before, it took five years to get to this one. Right. Again, really well done illustration and, and a story as well. And so, we look forward to being able to get issue number two, um, of course. But that's his inspiration. Um, and he has a lot of love for San Jose. He went to San Jose City College. Uh, he also ran with a track club at San Jose State University. Ah. Um, one of the things he does on the side is run long distance running. Um, he is hoping, one of his goals is to hopefully run uh, what they call the, ma the Masters Marathon in mm -hmm. Brazil, which is the over 50 uh, runners. So it'll wow. be exciting. Yeah. And aside from writing, um, he runs as well. So is this gonna be going national as well? We hope it will be. Um, part of the uh, negotiations we're doing right now is talking to different uh, national distributors. So we're waiting to hear back and make sure that we also have our ducks in a row and we have everything that they need to make sure that we get that exposure. Wow. Well, I hope the community comes out and supports this uh, comic book. It's really uh, an, probably a collector's item as well. I so you want to so. make sure you yes. get yours now. Mm -hmm. Comes in a little cover, plastic cover, so you yeah. can preserve it and put it away and or get it for your kids so that way they could read something that's culturally relevant. So mm -hmm. that would be excellent. Talking, you just mentioned he's a long distance runner. Can you tell us about the Peace and Dignity Run? Just a little bit, I know mm -hmm. we're gonna have a, another guest that's gonna talk about that, but tell us a little bit about what that is. Uh, well, I am involved with the local San Jose Organizing Committee for Peace and Dignity 2012, which is actually the spiritual run for water this year. Um, so we're inviting the community to help us honor water in this uh, prayer run. Uh, they will be, uh, the runners will be coming all the way from Alaska and they start on May 1st. And will be making their way to San Jose sometime in July, uh, probably the second week of July. Um, first and second week of July, mm -hmm. they'll be in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. Um, and in, in doing so right now, we're preparing with fundraisers and getting to know more about the run itself mm -hmm. and the history of it. But uh, Peace and Dignity started in 1992 um, as the first run, and it was a means to fulfill the prophecy of one day the um, First Nations of the North and the South uh, Whereas the say of those of the uh, ego and the condor will right. one day reunite, right, and um, be working again in unity um, and harmony. And so uh, it's a beautiful run. The, the part from um, Argentina will start in April, um, and eventually they will meet in uh, November. They schedule it in late November, possibly first week of December in Guatemala with the Mayan community out there. Wow. I think that's so fascinating. It's like every four years they have the run. Every four years. And it, every four years has been dedicated to something, mm -hmm. um, whether the children or the women, the elders, et cetera. And there's what about how many people run? Um, it, it varies uh, all the time, um, but there's always a good cohort that starts. Uh, I'm not sure yet um, of those details. But uh, it's sort but of almost like a relay too, right? It is because like a relay. So it'll... It'll probably start with maybe 20 runners, mm -hmm. 10 to 20 runners. And as they visit each indigenous community or hosting community, 
um, more r local runners will join in and they will join in, like you said, in a relay form for maybe a couple of cities. Some people mm -hmm. will join for a few states. Um, some will only do the United States. Some will only do uh, Canada, right? Um, others do the whole run from all the way from Alaska, oh all the way down to the meeting point in Guatemala. Um, there's a few folks that may do it just, just uh, you know, across the border to Mexico, and then we'll end there. And, and you know, some it will all just depends. run across San Jose mm -hmm. with them, or from yes. San Jose to Gilroy, yes. something like that, or a little Watsonville, stretch like that. Or Salinas. Right. Um, the route will come through. There's going to be two. There's going to be an inland and a, and a coastal uh, run that will eventually meet, I believe, here in San Jose or um, not San Francisco or Oakland. And um, in doing so, then they'll be continuing the route um, coming El Camino Real to San Jose, uh, Gilroy, Hollister, uh, Watsonville, Salina, Soledad, and then to King City, mm -hmm. some, somehow like that, in that way. So uh, we'll be hosting them here, uh, hopefully. It works out um, in July. And so we invite the community. Um, we already secured a uh, massage um, therapy for uh -huh. them as they come to, uh, you know, make their way here. Probably need new rest. shoes, huh? <laughs> yes. They need, um, they will need uh, supplies. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Um, socks, tennis shoes, first aid kit, waters, uh, you know, maybe even medicine, right, that they can carry forward, uh, food, uh, snacks, um, all those things they will need. Um, but we'll be having a few uh, fundraisers. Um, or if you'd like to donate, definitely connect with the San Jose Organizing Committee to do so as well. That's good. And if you'd like to yeah. run, yeah. let us know. And if you want to plan the fundraisers, let us know too. Some of the upcomings that we're doing is, and aside from tabling uh -huh. and some of the local community events, is also having a cultural event in April. And then eventually want to do a flea market in May and another cultural event, maybe like a film night. Uh, before we get ready, at least for ceremony, you know, during the month of June and mm -hmm. facilities and all that. Wow. So if you see anything about the Peace and Dignity Run, that's what we're talking about right now. And there'll be fundraisers coming up, and you'll see some advertisement mm -hmm. and posters well, and so forth page, for this. Native exactly. Voice TV. Check Native Voice TV's page on Facebook because we'll be letting you know the different events that are mm -hmm. going on in the community to support the Peace and Dignity Run mm -hmm. because it is very important, very spiritual. And if you can donate a case of water, if you can donate some money, if you can mm -hmm. donate time, mm -hmm. anything you can do to help yes. will be a big assistance to the committee. And I know it, it takes a long time for them to plan the run, yes. to do the run, yes. and then to support the run. Absolutely. So yeah, any, anything counts. Anything everything counts. counts. And we hope, you know, again, you know, it, to be grounded, right? It's all in honor of water. We know at this point with global warming, water is being impacted and. Our bodies are 70% water, Earth is 70% water, so we need to use any means of, of uh, not just community building, but definitely the practice of our spirituality, right, and, and making more unity among, or, you know, First Nation peoples um, across the continent, right, the Anahuac, the Americas, to make sure that we do honor water and keep that message and for the generations to come. That's right. Speaking of, do you involve a lot of youth or younger people in the, in the activities? We do. Um, we have at least one runner we know who's on the, who's 17, I believe, who's going to participate in the run. And then um, we have a few different activities like six screen in the bags to use as a merchandise. Okay. The youth will be doing that um, th thanks to um, Silicon Valley Debug. Uh, okay, for letting us for their equipment and facility, yes. Uh, so things of that sort, and if you need community service hours, like we're inviting to help us in the planning, especially for the events and the setting up and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and we encourage um, more than anything for at least our upcoming cultural events, if there's any youth performers, we invite them to come in and perform as well. So definitely any oh, way that good. they can that's good. develop. Start to them young. Mm -hmm, and, and to develop the leadership skills and... and and again, to honor water, right? To learn, like there's a whole community around uh, the youth and hopefully they start taking, you know, that leadership and, and that push right. for like, the runs to come. Because it's not over yet, you know? It happens <laughs> every right. four years, yeah. Yeah. How long is the run from the beginning to end? About six months? Longer? Um, six months, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it is about six months. Um, yeah. So for those people that do start in Alaska, it's a... Wow. Huge spiritual, physical, mental, oh, emotional life commitment. Life changing. 
and life changing. Absolutely, yeah. uh, it is a beautiful way, you know, to learn more about yourself and um, and about others. And in again, like I mentioned, you know, learning about other people's struggles uh, and celebrations, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot to celebrate amidst what's going on. You know, there's plenty of things that we we honor and and that we we need to cherish and, and be proud of, right? So right. we want to definitely pass on to whoever's involved in, and like you said, the youth are an important mm -hmm. part of that. Now, I know you're a great poet. I've heard your poetry. And uh, you've been writing for a long time? Yeah, actually, I started writing when I was about maybe six, seven years old. I started writing poetry. Um, I think as soon as I learned how to write right. um, as a means <laughs> of expressing myself, and then eventually, until I was in college is when I began performing what we know now as spoken word. Um, and so it, during that time, um, or till now, I've been performing here and there for community events mm -hmm. or classroom, or sometimes I may do college lectures as well. Um, and, and being able to travel with it too, which has been an exciting Good. part. You know, you never think that a hobby or a passion like that um, could transform. Something you actually enjoy. Yes, <laughs> you that you actually it. enjoy and be able to use, you mm -hmm. know, um, uh, be able to have a role in, in a professional manner, right? right? Where I'm like, oh, I'm a professional poet. I guess That's I can say right. that and get published and all these things that start out of, you know, you and a coffee table and a paper and a pen, you know? So it's, it's really nice uh, to have been able to go through that journey so far. Well, can you honor us with some spoken word? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, we, I'll, I'll be able to share a poem called La Historia de la Cumbia. It's the history of Cumbia. And I, I relate um, the history of slaves. And what I learned is that Cumbia as a music form started um, by the slaves in Colombia. And the steps that it, it has is the distance that the slaves took based on the shackles of their feet. So it's really, uh, when I learned about it, it was really very, very powerful to me. I'm like, what? Wow. Um, yeah, it was amazing when I learned about that. And I was like, well, slavery still exists in another form, right? But then even then, if, if we have uh, found a way um, for slavery to stop, at least uh, you know, in regards to the African-American community, how then can we still use that, um, that music mm -hmm. uh, as a means of freedom, right? If it, if it allowed them during the breaks, you know, working in the fields, um, then how do we use music or poetry or anything else um, to liberate us, right? Um, so I related to what's going on now, you know, the new, the new way that mm -hmm. we may be slaves, but the new ways that we all may also have our freedom, you know, claim it. Uh, and enjoy it, hopefully. So here it goes. Um, and, it, and, and it goes between English and Spanish here and there. <laughs> 